Hey, to get started, I want to talk about how I sold over a million dollars of software in 60 days using four micro videos. But, bef but before I get into that, the first thing I want to talk about is the problem with online marketing is so many people are lazy and they create copycat offers. It's a real reason that so many people fail and so many people quit because they didn't have the success they want because they spend their time copying other people. So you need to be different when designing your marketing. And here's a story on how not to be a copycat and how to properly do things differently so you have massive success. This is what we did to sell a million dollars of software in 60 days. So back in 2009, 2010, in the real estate, industry, the most successful offers were for software. They helped investors find deals, set up websites and manage your lead flow. That was the big hook. That was the big angle that everybody was doing and started becoming very copycatish, right? Yes, leads are sexy and everyone used it as their big hook. All the offers and pitches really started to sound really the same. It was copycat, right? So I knew we had a small window of opportunity to attack the market. And one thing that I realized was real, real estate investors really just wanted to make money. The leads were just a means to the end. So everybody that was creating these offers and these scenarios were talking about the leads of the process. They weren't talking about the end result that they wanted, right? So lucky for me, my past experience was in the money side at that time. So instead of talking about leads, I knew I had to figure out the way, the right way to talk about money. And so I got my start in real estate doing mortgages. And I knew I was confident doing that because I got my start in real estate in the mortgage industry. And back then we used Lending Tree as a lead source, right? So once again, leads, everybody wanted leads. Well, the name was huge back then in the day and it still is really, really large in the real estate space now. And it's a massive company, but it hit me. What we needed to do was build the lending tree for investors. So lending tree was not for investors, for the homeowner trying to refinance a home or purchase a new home. They never really marketed to the investors. So how could we tackle that niche within the industry? So we defined what an investor struggled with before actually getting the money, right? We know that investors, they needed deals, they struggled with buyers, they struggled with sellers, they struggled with buyers, they struggled with money. We knew those were the struggles. So now I'm not here in the way that I went about it in our marketing, and I'll explain exactly how we did in a second, but I basically came with the attitude of, we're not here to teach you how to get deals. Everyone and their brothers teaching you this stuff already. I'm here to show you how to make money, right? So we took a different angle in the very beginning, and here's exactly how we did it. Now, I didn't have all the skills. So I started to hire the dream team to help get it done. And I just talked about the three big problems that the investors were having before they could get to the money and make the money, right? So sellers, deals, buyers, people with money, or funding their deals. So what we did is we created four micro videos. And at the time, everybody was doing these webinars and other pitches and all this other stuff. So we created four micro videos. I'll get to that in a second. But as I said, I did not know how to do all of this, so I hired the dream team. I started first, we were building a software. I knew I wanted to create the software because software was selling really big. I felt software was the best opportunity. Took a little bit longer to get to market, but provided opportunity and the sexiness that I know what people wanted in that space, right? And it was proven that the mechanism of software was working. So I, so I hired a development team, mapped it all out, and we started coding it up and building it out. Now, from there, while the developers were building that out, I went on and I hired a copywriter, the best in the real estate biz at the time, probably still is if he just doesn't write for anyone else now, but to write the sales copy, and we did it different. What we did, was this is when we decided not to do this webinar method, right? So if, if you're in online marketing, you've used a webinar before, there's kind of a process that people go through. It's usually the three core myths of three problems that you go through, break them down, educate, train. I wanted to do something different. I felt like the webinar process at that time was being bored and people weren't paying as much attention. So we broke it up into four micro videos. Number one was we talked about deals and how to how to get deals right number two we talked about how to get buyers so we talked about major pain point one deals and sellers then we talked about video two it ended up being about a, a 10 to 12 minute video each one of these video 
Two was about buyers and accessing buyers, right? So the big pain of not being able to do that. So talked about the pains and the solutions, pains and solutions. Video three was talking about money and how they needed a platform that would really kind of be the lending tree for them in regards to investors, right? What that platform that was there. So with that, the fourth video was kind of where all the magic came into play uh, with the copywriter. Man, I was stoked to have him on the team. And what he did is he took and now had a 20 minute sales letter. So we talked about pain, problem, solution, pain, problem, solution, pain, problem, solution. So by the fourth video, they've, they've consumed these videos. The engagement rate in these videos was insane. And I'll explain why that wasn't a second. But what we did is then put a sales video in place that reiterated the three things they just went through and then made the offer of our solution, which was the software that we put together. Now, the reason these videos work so well, the reason it hit the market at the way it did was because these four videos were done in a high quality manner. So lesson in this here, I hired a videographer. I went into a studio, I had all the scripts, I read them off, I had a green screen behind me. This isn't a green screen, but that's what I had behind me when I did these. I then sent them to the video editor and it was all motion and flashing and all this stuff coming in and very engaging videos and not just me kind of talking like I am now, but these videos were meant to sell, entertain and sell through that process. So I guess another tip there is make sure you entertain, right? All right, so now that we had the videos, right? We created a really unique process in our in our industry that had not been used with those videos. So what I was going to do was handle the funnel side. All right, the funnel was in my wheelhouse, right? This is what we had done uh, leading up to this multiple for multiple years. And actually, this probably, if I had to look back on it, was one of the offers that we created that people started reaching out to me and asking me to help them build funnels and spun off into the agency we had for years. But inside of the funnel what i wanted was man i really don't want i don't want to drive everybody and have to take their attention for 60 to 90 minutes i know people are busy i want to give them 12 to 15 minute blocks to watch and then have the final video from there so here's the thing people love to funnel hack within industry and this is where we did things differently now the problem with funnel hacking within industry is this is the fastest way to create yourself as a copycat. People know it when they see your offer because when you funnel hack within your industry, you start using the languaging and the offer mechanism, offer creation and all that stuff that someone else is doing because it, it really kind of hinders your creativity. So as the great Gene Schwartz said, you can't solve your sales problem with another man's formula, all right? So what we knew is the funnel needed to be different, but there's a lesson within this. Some industries are more mature than others. And so what I did is the internet marketing industry was way ahead of the real estate investing uh, industry in regards to the marketing and the kind of the stuff that was being done and trends that were being set. So what I did is I looked at that industry and said, wow, this, this system and this kind of process did really, really, really well for a marketing launch and a product launch. So what I did is, all right, uh, what I want to do is model that process on the front end. Now, I didn't know what they were doing well, on the back end of their business, so I wasn't so worried about that, but just the delivery and the engagement that they used and the mechanisms they used to get their message out, right? So that was super important. So we went to the IM space, we saw some, we decided to be the first to use it in our space, but because the IM space was so far ahead of the real estate marketing space in regards to education sales, it was so fresh and new to the real estate space. So there's a lesson within that, uh, hopefully that you can take. Now, a problem along the way. Now, I've just told you about the process and the things we did and how we separated ourselves, but there are problems along the way. One, we had development issues. Two, we had to rally support. So I started building momentum. I started getting people on board to help us really launch this thing out. We wanted to get a group of affiliates to help us promote this really, really fast and hit the market with it quickly, generate revenue. We paid them all to do it. But here's the thing, the one that stands out, I've got two that stand out and the one that stands out to me kind of really was a challenge, right? So there was another guy in our space that had a software for leads and websites and everything else, right? So for six months, I kept saying, hey, I'm building a software that solves the one problem you don't solve. I'd love your support. I supported you. I would love your support on what we're doing. 
Well, come to find out like a week before we're getting ready to launch, I sent him everything, he's checking it out and he emails me and said, you stole my stuff and started threatening me and all this stuff, right? And I, I don't know exactly why, what set him off, but when it came down to it, I guess you know, he's kind of, he apparently felt he owned the trademark to the words real estate and the color of green is really what it came down to. It's stupid as hell. But uh, I don't know exactly why this happened or why he freaked out. But during that process, it kind of took some wind out of our sails, right? Along the way. Now, I could have said, all right, man, I'm fine. I'm not done. What I did is I put my dev team out there. I said, hey, go change the color. We're not changing the name. And uh, we changed some coloring schemes and everything else, apparently, that, you know, he didn't he didn't like us using green for some odd reason but i could have used that as an excuse to back off i could have used that as an excuse to not move forward but i didn't right and you shouldn't either because that crap is going to happen to you as you build your business now lesson number two you're going to be attacked along the way to success right this one it took wind out of our sales right we lost affiliates as i mentioned which was probably it probably would have doubled. I'd be making a video right now that said how we generated $2 million in revenue in 60 days selling a software with four micro videos, right? Instead, I'm telling you how we sold a million dollars of software in 60 days using four, four micro videos. It happens. Part two here is, was, was I told I launched the software, I would be out of business. Another guy came to me, another problem number two. I was in a mastermind. I was saying, here's what we're getting ready to do. Here's our process. And the guy came to me and said, hey, you launch this software, you're gonna be out of business within a year. I gotta tell you, man, he was right. But he's not right how he thought he was, right? I didn't let them tell me, he was beating on me, telling me how bad of an idea it was. I wasn't gonna let that stop me from going forward. And I tell you these problems because no good success story goes without issues, right? And I don't want you to stop yourself when you're building a business, whether it's in e-com, whether it's in finance, whether it's in tactical, whatever the business is you're building, people are gonna get in your way. It's not your fault, man. Just keep pushing forward, right? So it was when you're doing great things, you will run up against people who are afraid, who want to project their egos, who want to protect their egos, or just hate on you because they won't take the risk that you're taking. All right, so here's what I wanna do. I wanna, I wanna sum this up. Those were the problems. The one guy telling me that, you know, apparently we we're stealing a stuff, which we were not. We were solving a problem he didn't solve. Uh, second is the guy telling me that we were going to be out of business within a year and he was right, which I'll explain that in a second. Uh, at the end of the day, we fought through that. We built the system. We looked at the industry, said, how can we be different? How can we take a mature marketing process from a different industry that's a couple years ahead of us, implement that into our industry? And then from there, we launched with less, even though we launched with less, less support because of some of those issues, we still sold over 1 million in software within the first 60 days. And I was out of the business because I ultimately sold that company to an investment fund because we became the lending tree for investors. So when we sold that company, he was right. I did get out of the business, but it was in a good way, not a bad way. So a couple lessons here for you uh, to wrap this up. You got to find a new angle that gets to the heart of the real desire, right? The real desire of your customer. Not just something they want, but the real desire. So in this example, they knew they needed leads. They knew they needed websites. They liked the idea of leveraging it online to do that. But at the end of the day, their real desire for all that stuff was just to make money for other reasons, right? Now, another thing is to reiterate, look at mature industries and see how you can bring it into your industry. And also handle and move on when the force of average begins to attack you. And last but not least, you gotta have conviction in yourself and push forward. People will stand in your way, forces will get in your way, but have the conviction, belief that you are doing exactly what you know what to do, make it happen and push forward. If you gain value from this video, do me a favor, share, like, comment. And I greatly appreciate you helping get the message out. Thank you.